In this one, we're gonna tear down an old Mastercraft battery booster. This thing's got everything on it. It's even got an air compressor and navigation lights for your boat. Everything. Let's uh, see why this one's not working. So I was brought this unit to uh, take a look at, to see what needs to, what needs, what the owner of it needs to do to get it up and running. It's not very old, but apparently it's not working. And this is a Canadian Tire device, Motomaster, made by Intertech. And it's a recreational power pack, and they say 33 amp hour deep cycle battery, crank 800 crank assist amps, and a 400 watt power inverter. And it's not working because when he turns it on, this is it uh, goes off right away. The, the, the battery itself is well, it's only coming up at nine volts, and it's fully charged. So. The battery itself is more than likely shot. It's kind of a neat concept. This thing has a whole bunch of a whole bunch of accessories. It has navigation lights, so if you're you're out in your boat at night, you can put it at the front of your boat to let everybody know that you're there. And it has a 12 volt, 12 amp outlet. It has binding posts to connect your jumper cables to, to jump start a vehicle or a boat motor. It also has AC power inverter and USB output. But as I say, he just he just took this off charge, and it's only showing like 9.7 volts so we're gonna open this up and investigate oh and it also even on the back of it here it has an air compressor I think the battery is totally flat now but um, battery is totally flat it's gonna need new battery so let's just pop this thing apart and uh, see what it's gonna how, how to change it first of all and uh, then I can let him know what he needs to get to get this thing up and running if he wants to go that road it's gonna be a, a fairly big battery I think inside here probably one of those batteries like is used in like mobility scooters I'll start out by removing all the screws in the handle Now the fellow that owns this told me it's only a couple years old, but on the uh, on the bottom of it there's a date of manufacture. It's 2013, so this thing's more than just a, a couple of years old. This thing is uh, like nine years old, so that would explain why the the battery is in the condition it's in, because um, lead acid batteries do have a shelf life, and, that, and this will. Most certainly be a lead acid battery. What we'll do is we'll check the charging voltage on it. I'll plug it in, make the adapter and everything's with it to charge it up. I'll plug it in and, and just measure the charging voltage in. and then we'll put it back together because I won't be repairing this unit. But we will see what's inside it. I don't even know what to take this thing apart. I think this just takes the uh, it just takes the, the, the handle off of it, but there may be other screws in behind here that I have to get at, like down through here. That's why I'm removing these ones first. As I thought, there are screws down through here that the handles have to come off. And I remove these ones and the whole unit should, or the back should pop off it, I would think and reveal a relatively large maintenance free lead acid battery. We'll see what size it is and and then we'll just test the charging circuit and just see what it's what it's doing. 
But I'm, I think the charging circuit's probably okay. It's just the battery itself. Being a lead acid battery, they do have a relatively short life. And I highly doubt that the guy that owns this is even going to replace the battery, but I'll, I'll give him that option. He has one of the lithium power stations that I reviewed there in the last six months or so. He's got that, so I mean, he's got a, a power station that will have uh, a lot of features that this one doesn't have. It doesn't have an air compressor, but you know, how often do you need an air compressor? I guess if you get a flat tire, right? But Two more screws up here that need to come out and then the unit should pop apart okay I got the screws out got the air hose out of the way here the back should lift off this thing uh, well it should I'm sure there's something else that's probably holding it up but we'll see here or is it the front that comes off maybe the front pops off of it something pops off Sneaking suspicion that I have to remove the accessory packs to the charger and spotlight. Yeah, I gotta pull out some plastic clips on either side. These clips are not designed to come out, you have to kind of really pry them out. It might go back in one time and lock in place again. I'll give it back to him without popping these back in just because if he decides to at some point change the battery, he'll have to take them out again anyway. So I'll pop these out on both sides just so we can gain entry. So they're not the easiest things to open up because there's no, there's no release on them. You just kind of have to pry them. Here's the, this is the jumper cable side for jumping a battery. The easiest way to get these out is to use a pair of side cutters and just uh, get them underneath the, the lip and just use it to pry them up. It's about the only way to get these things open because they're not designed to be removed. They're designed to be cut and taken out they're like a plastic rivet but uh, we don't want to we don't want to do that because I'm gonna try to put these things back in when this thing goes back together. But this is about all you can do to get into these things. After much effort and cursing, I've got the clips out. Now we can pop this thing apart and take a look at the bad boy battery that's in this thing. And it's a big one. So the front and back cover separate. Here's the battery here. Rechargeable sealed lead acid battery. It's a Sea Lake lead acid. Terminals be on the top. It's actually sitting on its side. This is the bottom, the side, and the top. There it is, complete with its terminals. And for sure, this is going to be the problem. It's going to be the battery. Put the battery meter on it, but 10.7 um, volts. So the battery is shot. That's not leaking, that's just, looked like leaking there. That's actually just the glue that's used to seal it up. So what he's going to have to do is he's going to have to find a new battery for this unit. If he wants this thing to run. It's just a 33 amp hour, 12 volt, 20 hour battery. Got a big circuit breaker here. Turn that on. 
to turn on the power to these terminals. It has a polarity checker as well, so that if you're hooking it up to a boost, to boost, uh, it will give you a polarity check before you turn it on. And uh, that's pretty much it. These batteries here, one of these is going to connect up to the compressor, and then these other ones here are connecting up to a switch in the front here. Another terminal on the front. A circuit breaker is what it is. There's a circuit breaker right down here. We look at it. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I'll see if I can turn this around. This is the power inverter, obviously. There's a circuit breaker right down here, and then the, the switches that control the power inverter and everything else, and the compressor is actually right down on the back here. Can't open this up any more than this because I've got air hoses and everything connecting up this gauge and uh, and then the air hose coming out the back. So that's that's a teardown on one of these units. If you have one of these units and then you need to change the battery, that's how to get into it to do it. And now I'm going to reverse this and just put this thing back together because there's really not a heck of a lot that I can do to this. And plug in the charger. I can plug in the the, um, the power charger. We'll make sure that that's working. Maybe his transformer is no good. It's a 13 volt DC output at uh, one amp. That's what's used to charge this. So we'll check this. Make sure that the battery charger is working. And it is 18 volts because it's not regulated. Normally what happens is you just plug this into the front, like here, to charge. And then, of course, I have to connect this up because uh, with the case separated like this, the battery wire is not quite long enough. So we're just going to put this back in. We'll, uh, we'll plug it in and just make sure that it's getting voltage, but I'm sure that it is. All right, now when I plug this in, it should go into, it, it says it's fully charged. And the reason it's saying it's fully charged is the battery itself is not accepting any due to the fact that the cells themselves are dry. Voltage comes up to 16 volts because there's no load. If I were to connect a another battery across here, like one of my seven amp gel cells, this would go into the charged mode, charging mode and indicate that it's charging. But how this works, how the charging circuit works to tell you when it's fully charged is it's measuring the battery voltage. And when the battery is discharged, and a battery is working, okay, when the battery is discharged and it's working, current from the charger is going into the battery. So it's putting a load on and dro dropping the voltage down below 12 volts because the battery itself is, is taking a charge. Once the battery voltage gets to 13.8 typically, 14 volts or so, that's when the charge circuit knows that the battery is charged and it stops trying to supply current. And it will actually continue because it'll float it, right? It'll, it'll float it on charge to keep it fully charged. Uh, a lead acid battery, once it's fully charged, will gradually draw less and less current once it reach, reaches its fully charged status. If I go and grab just a regular 12 volt gel cell, I can throw it across these terminals here and uh, it will, will, will see the light go red and it will indicate that it's charging. Okay, so I've just connected up my 12 volt gel cell. I don't, I don't need to use anything heavier than that because I'm not going to be uh, drawing any current from it. I'll be charging it with one amp maximum. If I press my little test button here now, you'll see it says 12.6. I've just got the switch on. If I turn the switch off here, it'll drop back down, right down to 10.2. So when I turn that on, it's measuring 12.6. If I plug in this charger, the red light comes on, indicating it's charging. And the voltage is now going up to 13 volts, 13.4. Once this other little gel cell gets up to its full charge, it will draw less current 
once it draws less current and draws below the threshold for the cutoff on the charger this light will then turn green and indicate that the battery is fully charged so we know the charging circuit is working I can simulate that by just shutting off the power here then it'll stop drawing current and the light goes green on this side as you can see I don't know if you can see that but the green light has come on over here and if I do a test it's now showing 16 volts because that's what this charger is putting out it probably will not go back to indicate that it's charging unless I remove the, the uh, plug and plug it back in and now the red lights come back on again as you can see you see that the red light there and if I disconnect the battery by shutting off the switch it goes green so we know that the charger is working the charge circuits working the adapter is working the voltage detection circuit is working the only fault with this is the actual main gel cell needs to be replaced if I were to connect using heavier cables to my little gel cell I could actually turn the power inverter on so we'll do that we'll turn the power inverter on here and draw a couple hundred watts won't draw a lot because I think it's only a 400 watt inverter so but I can draw some power until my little 7 amp gel cell dies which won't last that long it might provide 20 minutes of power if it's fully charged but if I clip that on there and I clip this other one on over here on the other side just like I was going to do a battery boost I get my correct polarity indicator if I turn this on I can now turn on my AC outlet and if I plug something into here it will work so I've put my 100 watt bulb from my dim bulb tester and will it turn on and what do we do here there we go Uh, it's telling me my battery is just about shot. This battery is not charged and it's also old. So it's telling me that the uh, it's screaming at me because the battery voltage that we look at it has dropped down to 11 volts, 10.9 volts. So this battery here is also pretty much done. As I say, I haven't charged this one up. I only, I only had it on charge there for a few minutes and it's also an old battery. This is a battery out of an old UPS. But as you can see, it's generating 120 volts. Now, I'm not drawing as much current. The battery voltage has gone back up to 12.2. So when this gets down below 12 volts is where it's going to uh, start to beep. 11 volts. Oh, yeah, 10, 11, point, yeah, 11 volts, 10.9 is where it's going to start to uh, die. If I shut off the main switch back here, cut this battery off, this will probably go out right away because this battery here is pretty much dead which it is right that's the built-in battery low voltage but when I turn on this other one I still got enough juice to run for a few minutes this is a 100 watt incandescent bulb anyway let's shut it off so that's uh, that's pretty much this one we know what the fault is. I'm going to put it back together and give it back to the fellow and I won't put these clips back in just so that he can, if he decides he wants to get a new battery, he'll know how to take it apart and how to change it. Pretty simple. Just the two terminals, positive and negative. The key is getting a battery the same size that fit in the cabinet, but this is, again, a standard size battery. Anyway, I'm going to throw it back together. Thanks for watching.